Today I will tell you how my auntie helped me to be a crossdresser, or I can say she is the only one who made me a crossdresser. So the story was very interesting and the end was unimaginable. So don't skip any part. Now let's continue the story. Friday marked the end of college, signaling the onset of the summer break. Excitement filled the air as I returned home, and amidst the preparations for dinner, I discovered a letter from my Aunt Joan. She expressed her desire to see me during the summer holidays, having not laid eyes on me for several years. I shared the news with my mother, who encouraged me to spend some quality time with my aunt. Early on Saturday morning, brimming with anticipation, I boarded a bus that would take me to the interstation, and from there, another bus to my aunt's place. Aunt Joan's joy knew no bounds when she swung open the door, her eyes shining with pride as she remarked on how I had grown into a handsome young man. After the initial greetings, I took my aunt out to a local restaurant, treating her to a delightful meal. On our way back, I couldn't help but notice a mesmerizing pink sunray pleated skirt displayed in a boutique window. Oh, aunt, that skirt is absolutely beautiful. If only I were a girl, I would buy it, I mused aloud. With a mischievous twinkle in her eye, Aunt Joan responded, My dear James, you don't have to be a girl to wear a skirt. Her words hung in the air, accompanied by a warm smile. If you'd like to wear it, I shall buy it for you. Blushing profusely, I tried to decline the offer, but my aunt wouldn't hear of it. We strolled back home, relishing the enchanting summer afternoon that seamlessly melted into a delightful evening. Upon our return, we settled down for tea, savoring the cakes I had brought. In the midst of our pleasant conversation, the phone rang, and Aunt Joan hurriedly answered it. Her face registered a hint of concern as she hung up. Oh dear, it can't be helped. I'll try to manage without her, she muttered, addressing whoever was on the line. Curiosity getting the better of me, I inquired if something was wrong. Not at all, James. It's just that the girl who was supposed to come for her dress fitting on Sunday has fallen ill. Now I'll have to find a way to manage without her. Is there any way I can help, Aunt? I asked, eager to lend a hand, even though I wasn't quite sure how. Aunt Joan, a skilled seamstress and dressmaker, looked at me, her eyes filled with hope. James, you're a wonder. Of course you can help. You're about the same height as Susan, the girl who was supposed to come, and your figure seems to be quite similar too. Oh my dear, you're an angel. I can manage the fitting without her, and I bet the dress will fit her perfectly. Taken aback by her request, I hesitated for a moment, but realizing my aunt's disappointment, I couldn't bring myself to refuse. All right, aunt. If I can be of assistance, I'll do it. But please remember, I'm just standing in for the fitting. I'm not going to continue doing this regularly. A smile of gratitude spread across my aunt's face as she exclaimed, Oh, thank you, James. Without further ado, she instructed me to undress while she prepared a bath. Unbeknownst to me, she added a few of her toiletries to the water. I entered the bathroom, only to find my aunt waiting for me. James, do you usually take baths in your underpants? She asked, her tone gentle yet firm. No, aunt. Well then, take them off, my dear boy. Could you please leave the room first, aunt? Don't be silly. I'm your aunt now, she said, closing in on me and pointing upward. Look, is that a spider on the ceiling? Momentarily distracted, I gazed upward, and in one swift move, my aunt snatched my pants down to my feet, urging me to step out of them. Shocked, and now standing stark naked, I instinctively tried to cover myself, but my aunt gently stopped me, declaring, We're all girls here. Her words drained me of strength, leaving me feeling vulnerable. Get into the tub, Jane, and be quick about it, Aunt Joan commanded. Jane? Who's Jane? I stammered. You are, my dear. Surely you don't want to be addressed as James while wearing a dress. I reluctantly complied, submerging myself in the bathwater that now bore a hint of femininity. My aunt's presence reassured me, and she returned after about fifteen minutes to wash and shampoo my hair. You have lovely long hair, Jane. It suits you perfectly, she remarked, caressing my wet locks. Wanting to explain that I had only agreed to stand in for the dress fitting, I found myself caught up in the moment. I was already being called Jane, and any protest seemed futile as I stood naked in the bath, vulnerable to my aunt's guidance. Once rinsed and dried, she led me to the bedroom. Fortunately, I have some underwear for girls and women available here. Let's measure your bust, waist, and hips, dear. I stood before her naked, 
as she took my measurements for the girl's undergarments. For the bra, you'll need a 36B. Your waist is slim, and your hips measure a nice 36. Oh my, you truly have a lovely figure. Many girls would envy what you have. Aunt Joan fussed over the lingerie before selecting a white lace bra and matching panties. Now please stand still, Jane, so I can ensure the bust measurement matches Susan's. The bra was delicately placed on me and fastened, leaving me feeling trapped. Aunt Joan used inserts to enhance the bust to a pleasing 36B cup. Then, with her support, I stepped into the white panties, feeling their gentle embrace against my skin. A shiver ran through me, not from the chill, but from an unexpected excitement. Aunt Joan beamed with delight as she looked at me. You'll need the complete set, my love. A garter belt, stockings, and a full slip. I could hardly believe it. Aunt Joan found the items and dressed me in them. Shoes now. Let me see. Susan wears a size 5, and by sheer luck you do too, my dear niece Jane. A surge of panic welled up within me, urging me to escape. But how could I, in my current state of women's underwear? Jane, please take a few steps around, my dear. You must get accustomed to the heels. Aunt, I'm only doing this for the dress fitting. I won't be doing it on a regular basis, I protested. Aunt Joan smiled knowingly and replied, We shall see. With my hair styled and makeup applied, my aunt assured me that, in my current state, if anyone were to visit, they would see a teenage girl rather than a teenage boy in girls' underwear. I twirled before her, and my full slip billowed gracefully, creating a foreign yet fascinating sensation. Aunt Joan, ever perceptive, noticed my growing fondness for wearing girls' intimates. Now, my dear, it's time for the dress, she declared her eyes sparkling with satisfaction. I hesitated for a moment, contemplating my options. Should I resist further, or should I succumb to the curiosity that had taken hold of me? With a mix of trepidation and intrigue, I nodded and allowed Aunt Joan to select a dress for me. She presented me with a beautiful knee-length floral sundress, its vibrant colors and delicate fabric exuding femininity. As she helped me slip into it, I felt a peculiar blend of nervousness and exhilaration. The dress clung to my newly adorned figure, accentuating curves that were foreign to me but felt strangely natural. As I stood before the mirror, Aunt Joan's eyes filled with pride. You look absolutely stunning, Jane. The dress fits you perfectly, she exclaimed. I couldn't deny the truth in her words. Looking at my reflection, I saw a transformed version of myself, an image that felt simultaneously familiar and new. The dress, combined with the undergarments and the subtle touch of makeup, had created a different persona, one that evoked both vulnerability and strength. Aunt Joan, never one to miss a beat, took out her camera and captured the moment. These photos will be a wonderful keepsake, she said with a knowing smile. I'll send them to Susan's mom so she can see how well the dress turned out. Her words sent a shiver down my spine. The realization hit me. I had willingly embarked on a journey that went beyond a mere dress fitting. In that moment, I couldn't help but wonder how far I would go, how deeply I would delve into this newfound exploration of my identity. Over the course of that summer, Aunt Joan became my guide and confidant. She introduced me to a world of fashion, femininity, and self-expression that I had never considered before. We spent countless afternoons browsing boutiques, trying on different outfits, and experimenting with hairstyles and makeup. With each passing day my confidence grew, and the line between James and Jane began to blur. But as the summer drew to a close, I faced a dilemma. The time had come for me to return home and resume my life as James. How could I reconcile the experiences and discoveries of the past few months with the expectations and norms of my previous existence? Aunt Joan sensed my internal struggle. With a gentle touch, she took my hand and looked into my eyes. Remember, my dear, that your journey of self-discovery doesn't end here. Embrace the parts of yourself that you've come to know and love. You don't have to fit into any predefined boxes or labels. Be true to your own heart. Her words resonated deeply within me. I realized that my journey as Jane was not about conforming to a specific identity, but about embracing the facets of myself that had long been hidden. The lessons I had learned about self-acceptance and authenticity would guide me as I navigated the complexities of my future. With Aunt Joan's support, I returned home and gradually shared my experiences with my family. It wasn't always easy, and there were moments of misunderstanding and resistance. However, 
through open communication and patience, they began to see the genuine happiness and confidence that embracing my true self brought me. Years passed, and Jane became an integral part of my identity. I discovered a community of like-minded individuals who embraced diversity and encouraged self-expression. Together, we shattered societal expectations and forged our own paths, unapologetically celebrating our unique journeys. Looking back, I am grateful for that fateful summer spent with Aunt Joan. She taught me that true acceptance comes from within, and that the love and support of those who truly care about us can empower us to be our authentic selves. And so, the story of James and Jane intertwined, a testament to the transformative power of self-discovery and the unwavering bond between an aunt and her beloved niece. So, my story ends here. What do you think about this story? Write in comment box. And if you have any special moment, write it here. Thank you.